Hi guys, welcome to another video. Today I'm going to be showing you how to do some shoelace littering using Photoshop and Illustrator. It's about 15 minutes long, so grab a copy and a comfy chair and we'll get started. So first up, we need to grab an image of a shoe. Uh, if you go to unsplash.com, you'll find plenty of free images. We're going to choose this one here, this Nike one. Uh, download, open that in Photoshop, and uh, we're going to make our own laces so we can get rid of this one we've got here just with the lasso tool. There you go, don't need to clone that really because um, we, we're going to put one over the top of that. Uh, select and copy the shoe and we're going to take it over to Illustrator just so we've got that positional bit there to make the lace with. Let's have a new document in Illustrator, 2000 by 2000 pixels wide. Make sure you've got the Pathfinder panel, the brushes panel and the swatches panel open and also the stroke panel. Paste in uh, the picture of our shoe. Place that on its own layer, hide and lock it. Use that in a bit. First off, grab the line tool. Draw a horizontal line. And make it about 270 pixels long. Make it black and we'll give it a 0.75 stroke width. With that selected, go to Effect, Distort and Transform, Zigzag. We want it 15 pixels size, absolute and five, five ridges. Make the point smooth, okay that. Go to Object, Expand Appearance. Then we want to duplicate this, so hold down the Alt key, drag it to the right, hold down the Shift key to keep it on the horizontal, and we just want to overlay the one we've already got there. Select both of those and go to Object, Blend, Blend Options. We want it on specific specified steps of 12. Click OK. Go to Object, Blend and Make and it should produce this sort of lattice style effect. Go to Object, Expand, click OK. Go to Object, Path, Outline Stroke, and then with the Pathfinder panel, click on Unite. Using the Direct Section tool, or select A on your keyboard, select a few of the points at one end, hit Command and X, which is cut, and then hit Command X again, which is cut again, and it will, it will invert that the shapes, so we're left with the inner shapes rather than the outer shapes. Now, we only want a couple of these S shapes together, so delete everything else. Grab the lasso tools, easiest for this. Okay, so we're left with this. Now what we want to do is join up every pair of these squares. Um, the first two need to be horizontally and the next two need to be vertical pairing and it follows on to the end. The best way to do this is go view outline. So we select the side of one of the panels, command X, command X on the other side. So you get rid of just that path select two points and hit command J to join them and then do it the same with the next one select those two points command J command J and then with these next two you want to select those two paths join the points do it the same with the next two and that pattern then follows all the way up. I'll fast forward this bit so you have to watch it. Once you've done that, go to view, preview, bring it back to normal. Now we want to duplicate that by holding down the Alt key again. And 
and drag into the right and hold down the shift key to keep it on the horizontally. Happy with that. And then we want to do that two more times. Now we're going to color our pattern in. Doesn't matter, we can change it later on, but it's just for doing it now is because we're going to add a black stroke to this, so it's good to have some color, like a slight bit of color, so we can differentiate the two. Because uh, ours is sort of black, gray, white. So we fill that, all of them, with that dark gray. Make the top row much lighter gray. Oh, if we want to select those, we're going to have to select all of them and click in the Pathfinder Divide, otherwise you can't color in individual panels. And these two we will color a light gray, but actually we'll join these together goes on the picture we're using it didn't have a bit in between okay once we've done that select it all and group it duplicate it again Do that one more time. Once we've done that, select it all and group that. Go to edit, copy, edit, paste in back. Don't deselect it because we want to give this a black stroke a line of stroke to the outside and uh, you might in your case need rounded joints but for me I'm just going to keep it square because it seems okay. Now go to object expand appearance and then we will unite that to create one object. Once you've done that select all, zoom in a bit now you want to go to view and make sure you have smart guys turned on and make sure you have the rulers uh, down the side and at the top and you're going to drag a ruler and put it on the point of the uh, of reference let's say on that middle of that gray make sure you have rulers showing and then we do it over the other side as well so that's make us a seamless pattern Now I need to now grab the rectangle tool, no fill, and just draw a box between those two lines that covers your pattern. So both the pattern and the box, right click, make clipping path. And that will hide the areas to the right and left. But the problem is that information is still there. So what we want to do is, with it selected, go up to a half final panel and select crop. And it will crop it for us so all that information disappears. So that's our pattern now. Uh, made we can now drag that onto the brushes panel and it will say new brush and we want a pattern brush okay and in this first box here where it says outer corner tile click on it scroll up to the top and click none all we want is that second one let's call it lace okay let's just test that out by doing a path looking good so we need to now need to just before we start writing out our type add a little uh, end bit that we get on the laces I'm sure it's got a technical term but I can't remember what it's called so we do that by duplicating our pattern grabbing the free transform tool by clicking on that bring up this other menu and we want the perspective distort 
bring that down into a sort of point. Go back to just the selection tool. I'm just going to um, squeeze it in a bit. Grab the rectangle tool. Draw a rectangle. You can't have gradients, unfortunately, in brushes. So we are just going to um, shade this just using different colored rectangles. So copy, Command C, Command F, bring it in, make that a lighter gray. Command C, Command F. There we go. And we select all of that and we drag it straight into our swatches panel, not into the brushes panel. Let go, don't need to do anything with that. And then what we do is deselect everything, double click on our new lace brush, and then the fifth box along, end tile, click on that, and then we can click on this new pattern swatch that appears in the drop down. And as you can see, it's put it on in there. Click OK, apply to strokes, and there we go. It's added the um, end bit to our lace. So now what we can do is move these two bits just onto a new layer which we can lock and hide, bring up our shoe, and we can start work drawing some type above the shoe, which the lace comes out of. Best way to do this is have some type. I'm using the font Montebello. I'll put the link in the description below. Place that on its own layer and make it a light gray color so we can just see it to trace over and lock it. Make sure it's underneath the lace. Now place the lace just a bit further than the hole. We need to make it a bit bigger. 0 0.8 seems about right. Once we're done, we're going to export this from Illustrator, so hide the other layers, so you're just left with the type layer. You can go to File, Export, Export As. For hyphen PNG. Make sure it's transparent background. Select Other under resolution, 800 PPI. Um, Art optimized, and then we're going to OK that. And we jump back over to Photoshop. In Photoshop, go to File, Place Embedded, select the lace, place it roughly where we had it in Illustrator. Give that layer a mask, and then we are going to make it look like it's coming out of that hole by erasing it. enough and then we want two layers above the lace type and we want to clip them to that layer so that when we we're going to put the highlights and the shadows in these so let's call that highlights shadows hold down the alt key and the arrow up here clipping it means it just goes over the lace rather than the whole canvas and we do the same with the top grab make sure you've got a black brush and it's just a soft brush so zero hardness size about 70 and then we're going to just darken this area around the around the hole and we go around just darkening areas that are hidden from the light
trying to add some sort of realism it's going to all be one shade and especially where it's going over the top I'll put that in we're going to mask it out in a minute mask out the bits which we go over I had to mask that there using the eraser tool we can just undo the bits that are going over the top of it overlapping it now we can do some highlights so get the brush make it white And there we go. Hope you found that useful and I explained it enough. If there's any questions, then please leave them in the comment section below. Otherwise, like usual, thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't, and I'll see you in the next video.